and perpendicular to B. In other words, it's perpendicular to the plane of the two vectors. Now, if it's perpendicular to the plane, then in that case, it's perpendicular to the blackboard. You have two choices. It's either coming at you perpendicular or it's coming straight, straight into the blackboard. And now, everyone has so his own way of doing it. I taught you what's called the right-hand corkscrew rule. You take the first one that is mentioned, in this case A, and you rotate it over the shortest angle to B. When you do that, you rotate your corkscrew seen from where you're sitting counterclockwise. Then the corkscrew comes to you, and so the direction of the vector is such that you will see the tip of the vector, so it's coming straight out of the blackboard. And so that gives you then the direction. Now I will give you the position x of an object as a function of time, and then we're going to ask ourselves a lot of questions about velocities, accelerations, sort of everything you can think of, everything we have covered, speeds, and I will cover here four seconds of time. So this is the time axis in seconds, and we will cover four seconds. So let this be one, two, three, four. And let the object B at position plus six. This is my x-axis. This is where the object is actually moving. And this is three. And here is minus three. And this, let's say, is in meters. Let's make a little grid so that it's easier for me to put in the, the curve. So now comes x as a function of t. The time t equals t seconds. The object is here, and it came from there. And this part is a parabola, and this parabola here is horizontal. It's important. You have to know that, so this is a parabola. And this here is horizontal. So the object goes from plus six to three, then it goes to minus three, then it stays there for one second, and then it goes back in one second to plus six. It's a one-dimensional problem. The motion is only in the x-axis, along the x-direction. Let's analyze all these different seconds that occur. Let's first take the first second during the first second. Since this is a parabola, you know that the acceleration is constant. So I hope you will conclude immediately that A must be a constant. If A is a constant, the position x as a function of time should change as follows, x0 plus v0t plus one-half a t squared. I expect you to know this equation. Very often do I give you equations at the exam, and that may well happen during the second and the third exam, but it will not be the case this time. The equations are all very fundamental, and you have to make them part of your world. So this is an equation that you will have to remember. All right, what is the velocity here? The velocity starts out to be zero, and the velocity here is not zero anymore. If I look at 
time t equals 1, then I have here x0 was 6. It starts out with velocity 0, that's a given. And I get plus 1 half times a t squared, but this is only one second. And so when it is at 3, I have 6 plus 1 half a times 1 squared, and so you'll find that a equals minus 6 meters per second squared. So during this first second, the acceleration is minus 6 meters per second squared. And the velocity v, as a function of time, is the derivative of this one, is v0 plus a t. v0 was 0, and so that is minus 6 times t. So the velocity is changing in a linear fashion. What do I know about the end of the first second? Well, I can say that x is 3. What do I know about the velocity? Well, the velocity is minus 6. What do I know about a? I don't. I don't know about a. It's true that during this first second, a is minus 6 meters per second squared, but it changes abruptly at this point, so it's ill-defined at this point. In fact, it's actually non-physical. So I really don't know exactly at the end what the acceleration is. Let's now go to the second second, and let's see what happens there. Second second. And first, let's look during, and then we'll look at situation at the end. During the second second, it is clear, since this is a straight line, that the velocity remains constant, and it remains minus six meters per second. That is exactly what it was at this point at the end. You can see it goes six meters from plus three to minus three in one second, so the velocity is minus six meters per second. The acceleration is therefore zero. You see that the acceleration changes abruptly from minus six meters per second square to zero, so I can't tell you what it is exactly at this moment in time. So that's the situation during the second second. And what is the situation at the end of the second section, second second? At the end I know that x equals minus three. What is the velocity? I don't know. Because it changes abruptly here from minus six to zero, so I don't know exactly what it is at that point. It's a non-physical thing. It's a very abrupt change. And the acceleration, yeah, that's also a very tricky thing. Because if the velocity is minus six on this side of the two seconds, and here becomes zero, and if that happens at in a split second, there must be a huge acceleration just at that point, which is non-physical. So I would also put a question mark at the A. I don't know what the A is. So we go to the third second, this part. Let's first look during the third second. Well, the object isn't going anywhere, it's just sitting there. X remains minus three. And the velocity is zero, and a is zero, we can agree on that. What is the situation at the end of the third second? That means t equals three. Well, all I know is that x is minus three. That's non-negotiable. What the velocity is, I don't know, because it's changing abruptly from zero to a positive value. So that's ill-defined. And the same is true for the acceleration. There is a sudden change in velocity. That means there must be a huge acceleration. It's unknown, ill-defined, because this curve is, of course, not very physical. 